Hi, this is Catherine Rose. I'm with Board Game Geek here at Spiel 2016. I'm sitting with Mihai Vinta and David Torzi from Cloud Island, and they're here to talk about Days of Ire, Budapest, 1956. So please, tell me about this game. Uh, well, it's about a very specific event in Hungary that happened almost exactly 60 years ago. Uh, at that time, the country was occupied by the Soviet Union, and the people of Hungary weren't uh, satisfied with the living conditions. They also wanted uh, reform communism. They weren't very uh, happy what they happened with them. So they started organizing protests at first. But as you know, the Soviet Union wasn't a fan of freedom of speech. So Not at they, all. <laughs> they tried to oppress it. And then it quickly escalated into firefights. It became a violent uh, few days. And uh, the game played through the first week of this event until the, the fighting parties could go get to a ceasefire agreement. And then the Soviets uh, went out from the country. But unfortunately, only for one week. They came back with full force later, but that's not within the scope of the game. I see it looks like you've been using uh, photographies from the time period as well from, yes. uh, to uh, illustrate the game. They're all uh, archived photos. We have uh, lots of sources for that, uh, mostly civilian. And we were very happy to find them it's and use them in this game. Yeah. Yeah. So how does the gameplay uh, well, uh, work? The gameplay uh, game can be played one to four players and it can be played either competitively, one versus many, in which case one player takes charge of the Soviet forces and uh, he tries to create more and more problems, put pressure on the player, on the other players, or might even try to injure and kill them, since if any of the revolutionary leaders fall, then the entire team loses. Mm -hmm. Or alternatively, it can be played fully cooperatively, oh, okay. in which case the Soviet player is uh, replaced by an automated opponent, a deck which does some events and uh, does some uh, changes to the board and then semi-randomly places uh, event cards and tanks on the board to, for the Hungarian team to overcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a more detailed way, uh, I think most people will first uh, see the game from the revolutionary point of view. In fact, I think our rulebook recommends that. So we prepared a little example of what we could do, because as a team we have four actions split evenly, so we'll be playing Mr. Blue and Mr. Yellow. Uh, yes, and so we have an action point allowance. Uh, we work together, discuss everything we need to do. In this instance, we have two actions per player. So what I want to do is resolve an event. These are the event cards, and uh, these can be resolved uh, by playing revolutionary cards, which are in our hands. And to do that, we must go to the same location as the, the event is and play revolutionary cards that match the resources that are on the event. For right now, I have two food supplies, for example, but I, have, I still need one more and an information. So how can we go around this? Let's say the good thing is that we decide who begins each turn. So here's my hand with uh, lots of firearms and some information in it which is what he will need. So let's say I'll go first. Everybody, every player gets one free movement. So I'll move over. The red lines represent adjacency between mm -hmm. the locations. They match actual physical adjacent, adjacencies in Budapest. And I'll use my first action to play... Oh, sorry. No, before I go over, I'll use my first action to activate a fighter. The fighters are the locals of Budapest who can be convinced to join the revolution. And they're very Some good. resistance fighters. Well, they're not fighters, they're ordinary people. Okay, yeah. yeah. But they become fighters. They, they yes. become fighters if we, if we convince them to join with us, if we activate them. Yes. And they will provide the same kind of resources that are cards, but unlike cards, they don't and get spent. And they have spent. resources here. On yes, cards. and some yes. of them have abilities yes. as well. So this one is uh, medical and this one is... Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. So I will spend an action to activate this food guy. And then I will take my movement and fighters come with me when I move. So I bring this guy over here. But I can't solve the event because I need two more food. And as you can see, my hand doesn't have two more food. So what I'll do is I'll make our life a little bit safer. And I'll play three firearm icons from a pistol and a, a good old round... Um, 
PPS. A P PPS 41. Yeah, it's a Russian weapon. <laughs> it's, it's stolen from the Tugs. And uh, that allows me to take off three militias. They are soldiers that could later attack us. And that was my two actions. And then it's my teammate's turn. So, as an action, I can ask the other person who's in the same location as me for cards. So, ah, so then you swap. Can... Only give or take. Yeah, so, so could you please give me that newspaper? Because that will give me information resource, which I really need. And now there and is food there from the uh, Yeah, there's food for the, yeah, fruit for the fighter. So there's one food, two food from my hand, and there's a newspaper. There's also one more, but I don't need it. So now you have what you yeah. need to resolve it. Yes, and I resolve it. And we get the bonus for it, which uh, immediately triggers when we resolve the event. And why do we want to resolve events? Is because that's how we win or lose. The Hungarians as a team win if they survive all seven rounds. And at the end of the game, there are no more than four events remaining on the board. Alright, so you need to keep the events in check to make sure that there's exactly. not too much going on but, by the time the game ends. But if we're too reckless and any of us yeah. gets four injuries, which we can get if we run into tanks, or if at the end of the round we are chased by snipers and militias of the Hungarian State Protection Authority, they are like then a, we will lose the game. Then, yeah. if either of us gets four hits, then the whole team loses the game. Yes. Uh, one way we like to explain the game, you've seen the Hungarian side. Uh, we like to explain the game as Twilight Struggle versus Pandemic. Oh, because the side you've just seen is, you know, point-to-point -point movement, action point allowance, cooperative uh, event resolution. Yes. That's a slightly more gamerish play take on mm -hmm. on uh, the classic cooperative system. What you haven't yet seen is the other side, because in a competitive game, uh, the Soviet player will have a hand of, a uh, smaller hand of headline cards. Yeah, there, there's a hand. Oh, Don't we worry. already put one out. So. All right, uh, I'll tell you about it. So, um, the headline cards are the Soviet player's hand, and it's very Twilight Struggle-ish, as there are red cards, which are helping the Soviet player, and green cards that have the revolutionaries. How we can play it is also similar. Uh, there's command points on it and an effect. When he plays a red card, he has to choose either the command point or the effect, which is always good for him. If he plays a green, green card, however, he always gets the command point, but he must give the effect to the revolutionary team. So he must keep a balance of the effects while trying to gather as many command points as he can. What are the command points good for? He can buy events from this market, uh, which he has. And these are events. If he buys it for the same amount of command point as he gathered from the headlines, he can place them uh, on the respective locations. For example, this fire in the museum happened in Astoria, so he places it right there. He can buy more and they all increase in numbers and as we said, the goal of the game is to get them down to four at the end of the game, so the Soviet has this incentive to place more and more and cause more trouble uh, in the city. Uh, and after the revolutionaries have taken their turn trying to solve these events, then the Soviet player gets a chance to try to move his troops around, move his, uh, and, attack, troops around and then yeah. cause damage. For which we have a, something we like to think is a fairly smart mechanism involving these beautifully illustrated Soviet propaganda cards. These cards will allow us to move either a sniper, those are the stronger units, or three militias, those are the weaker ones, or we can place more militias on the board at the reinforcements location or we can attack. Ah, there's the attack, yeah. Yeah, right there's there. an attack right there. So when we attack, uh, we, we chase, the, the Soviet player chases the Hungarians around with their troops, and when he attacks, it's resolved with uh, die roll, but uh, it's usually one hit and very rarely two, so the Hungarians can fairly well estimate how much they're getting hit. And then any card that the Soviet has played to catch catch the Hungarians, like he moved two snipers, he moved two snipers and some militia, and then he attacked. These cards will stay in the discard queue. Ah. And there are only two ways to get them back: either on the next turn play Soviet events because they will have reinforcement values on them, which allows you to take back from the bottom of ah, the queue, which means that if you do one big attack, you can do nothing good the next turn. <laughs> or he can skip an entire round and not play any of these cards and take all of them back, but that gives a lot of breathing space for the, the Hungarians. Uh, the Hungarians. Interesting. 
it's an int I like the, the asymmetric aspect of the game and the uh, the fact that you can choose whether to be cooperative or to uh, to have it one against many. Yes, we so, tried to think of all the possible people who could want to play this and make a mode that would suit them. Thank you. That is Days of Ire, Budapest 1956 from Cloud Island.